um, we have a portfolio of courses, short guides, articles, different newsletters, right? All free content. So we don't All charge free. a single cent, right? Okay. I've never taken a single penny, a single dollar oh, wow. okay. from the consumers, right? Because again, it's our job at school, I believe, to educate these masses. Polkadot Insider is lucky enough to be here with Jiro. He is the CEO of Fiskela. It is the leading media and educational of crypto and a blockchain platform. So it's really nice to have you here today. And thank you for having us. Great to be here. Thank you for coming to the show. <laughs> so um, first of all, can you please introduce yourself and uh, tell me your journey, your background, also the journey of Fiskela as well? Yeah, for sure. So fun fact, actually, Pia, um, I have a fine arts background. So I'm not necessarily a business major, a fine art, a finance major for that matter, right? Um, I'm more on the creative side of things. I mm -hmm. do logos, branding, social media. But for some reason, during my journey, mm -hmm. I found a love for cryptocurrencies and blockchain, right? While I was studying it back um, during my free time in college. And from there, combining the passion of my father, my different friends and whatnot, and my experiences in the Philippines, it really brought about a deeper interest for myself in this Web3 space, right? And I felt a calling um, to help the Filipino people be onboarded onto Web3 space through proper education, right? Because in the Philippines right now, we're a third world country um, and we don't necessarily have the best education or rails for people on different topics, right? Even more so, we're a low income, um, I guess, per capita um, country, right? In terms of average monthly income for people, mm -hmm. meaning not everyone has the right access, access. to education, right? Exactly. And I thought to myself, the Philippines is well equipped to be a leader in the blockchain space. We are very high in social media usage in terms of user adoption as well. But it needs an extra push for education, right? And with this whole calling, I started Bitskola back then during 2021, mm -hmm. um, roughly around 2.5 years ago. And yeah, been on it ever since. I've been working with institutions, government officials, uh, different enterprises in the Philippines, really towards blockchain education for the masses. And yeah. 2.5 years, not too short, but not too long, right? Just the right amount. <laughs> mm -hmm. Just the right amount. I'm a little bit curious. So Bitscala, is it start from like Bitcoin? It comes from Bitcoin, yeah. the bit part, So right? good, good question, actually. <laughs> so the word Bitscala is actually a combination of the word Bitcoin and okay. Escuelahan. So Escuelahan. Escuelahan, yes. That is a Tagalog word for school. So if you translate oh. it directly, that's like bit school. Is it like a, in, in Philippine, uh, Filipinos, right? Yes, a Tagalog word. Yes, ah, yes. Ah, I see. Mm. So it actually started with uh, Bitcoin education mm -hmm. um, because, of course, um, my first exposure to the crypto space was Bitcoin, naturally, right? So, you know, I thought I was lying down in my bed at 3 a.m. and I was like, what should I name my uh, education platform? Crypto school, crypto academy. Yeah, yeah. Why not crypto? But like Bitcoin, right? Yes, it yes. It seems like you're, you're the big fan of Bitcoin. <laughs> or is it because it's the OG coin? I'd say it's a mix of all. Um, mm -hmm. For one, I, I was, of course, I'm of course a fan of Bitcoin, right? I do believe in its security and its usage for Filipino people, remittances and whatnot. So uh, I'm, I guess I do love, of course, Bitcoin. I even have the Bitcoin stickers here on my oh, phone okay. here. <laughs> I can see that. Of course. The big love. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, but of course, it was also my first exposure. And of course, on homage to the OG crypto, right? It's what started everything. Um, but what I didn't want was the name Bitscola to be super Bitcoin focused, right? That's why I only included the bit part. And I felt like the bit part encapsulated Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it felt more general that it can pertain to anything crypto since it's bit, right? So, awesome. That. <laughs> yeah. I I think it's easy to remember, easy to use as well, and a little bit of your native language as For well. For sure, yeah. brilliant. So um, I think I like the. I think the most interesting part is that you were not in the crypto at first, right? Yes. Yeah, and you were not in financial or anything. More of like a visual guy, yes. a design guy. Yeah. But you said that you got interested in uh, like crypto when yeah. you were in like university. Yes. So you, you mean the money, you mean the money, like investing, you want to invest mm. more. Is that, why, that where was, does it come from? Uh, one of the ways, yes, mm -hmm. because for context, I was studying in my cafeteria. Um, I was studying on how to create money, right? I wanted to have different income streams. Mm -hmm. 
and I did start by trading stocks in the Philippine stock market. I see. Um, but while I was strolling through Google, learning about it, I saw an article about Bitcoin and Ethereum <laughs> actually, and that piqued my interest. Like, whoa, there's a thing called cryptocurrencies. Very interesting. So I did some research about it and. I just fell in love with it, right? For me, it was a different level to stocks because stocks, you trade them for money, mm -hmm. for profit, you're done, right? But for crypto, it felt more than that. Mm -hmm. In a sense, owning crypto, trading with crypto as well, had so many be benefits to society. Um, inflation hedge, remittances, cross-chain apps as well, right? All these jibber-jabber. It really just felt like it had a deeper meaning mm -hmm. to what you did as well compared to stocks, right? So. Um, that's where the rabbit hole started. Uh, started with Bitcoin, then Ethereum, then eventually all these other chains and protocols as well, um, leading to the creation of Escuela. I see. So crypto, but below crypto is like blockchain, right? It's, there, there's more than that. And and what you guys are making, it's like the combination of crypto and then blockchain. Uh, everything's combined for education. Of course. Yeah. So our main focus at Betscola is to really onboard the Filipino masses, right, mm -hmm. onto this Web3 space. So crypto, blockchain, NFTs, the apps, you name it, right. We just want to introduce this as well from an experience-based education model, right, onto the Filipino people. Because again, um, we do lack these resources in the Philippines, in a sense. Um, not everyone has, I guess, the opportunity um, to be exposed to this new space right at the bat with this amount of experience and this whole team, right? And we exactly want to do that. We want to uplift the Philippine people and, you know, just really cement the Philippine position as well as one of the leaders still in the coming decade. So with just a simple research, uh, just a simple search, you guys have like more than 15, 50 million users already. Actually, we do reach more than oh, that okay. as well. Um, so what's the exact number? No, not the exact number, but like the number? Yeah, well, on average, I'd say, what I can confidently say is we reach a few million Filipinas on a monthly okay. uh, basis, right? So this uh, like, reach to our huge. social media. Yes. Yeah, that's huge. So we have a population of around 110 million Filipinas oh, as of now. Yeah. And on Bitscola's end, we capitalize on social media like mm -hmm. TikTok, Facebook, Twitter, of course. Our physical events from different provinces in the Philippines, like workshops, obscene activities, even, and even as well government-mandated um, activities, right? Um, quick side note as well, just before this interview, I was talking to one of the party lists in the Philippines, right? Um, headed by Congress, uh, Congresswoman as well, of our friend. And we're going to be launching soon um, educational programs for different OFWs as well and seafarers in the Philippines. Yeah. So these different initiatives all combined together really is able to propel Bitscola to create an impact for education again, again, right? So we're not just a website, we're not just this, um, I guess, media page on social media. What I like to call it like an educational ecosystem mm -hmm. or an educational amplifier, I'd say. Uh, for the film market. It's like you're trying to build like a whole ecosystem for not just Filipinos, right? More uh, like worldwide users as well. Of course, of course. I mean, our main focus right now is Philippines, of course, since we're Filipinas. Um, but we do eventually do have plans as well to expand to other countries in a back region and maybe in the Middle East, right? Um, let's see. Can you like share with us some of the offerings that uh, we can find on uh, Biscilla? Because I mean, as a Vietnamese, but uh, when I heard anything, when I hear about like a five-minute crypto, yeah, course, I I, I absolutely want to try. It. You should check yeah, it out. Yeah, because, yeah, <laughs> I, I I check it out because anything that is short mm -hmm. and dig digestive, easy to learn, it's something that I would want want to sure. do. Yeah, and that's the goal, right? Yeah, I mean mass adoption. For the website side of things, um, we have a portfolio of courses, short guides, articles, different newsletters, right? All free content. So we don't charge a single cent, right? I've never taken a single penny, a single dollar oh, wow. okay. from the consumers, right? Because again, it's our job at school, I believe, to educate these masses. And again, with the whole idea of the Philippines not having a high average monthly income, it just doesn't sit, just, it doesn't sit right with us um, to charge for these courses, right? So we do have that on the website side of things. Of course, we all, like I mentioned a while ago, right? We have a very strong presence when it comes to communities, our different short form content with our different KOLs, influencers who really propagate our information and education on their different communities, platforms, and short form content, right? Of course, on the event side of things, Again, like I mentioned as well a while ago, uh, we do have a portfolio of a lots of events that we have been holding 
over the past quarters and future quarters in the Philippines. In fact, over the past uh, three months, we've held, I think, around five events already in the Philippines. And in the coming three months, we have currently four to six events lined up. So, you know, I'm, I'm pretty tired, it's honestly. Busy. <laughs> yeah. It's a busy year for you. Yeah, very yeah. busy year. Yeah. But I guess, you know, again, it's all in the passion and heart that we have for educating Filipinos um, onto the crypto and blockchain space, for sure. Very inspiring. Honestly. Thank you. <laughs> Let's talk about the situation uh, about blockchain and crypto in Philippines. Mm. I'm, sure. I'm curious. Yeah. So, uh, how does the government they, they encourage you guys to mm. for for the environment? Of course, I yeah. love this topic, by the way. So, yeah. when it comes to the Philippine uh, regulatory landscape, mm -hmm. um, over the past uh, years in the space, the, I wouldn't say the government was as open to blockchain and crypto. Like just the over the past years, right? Okay. But interesting enough, that changed this year, mm -hmm. right? Because again, we've seen the Axie Infinity craze around two years ago during the last bull market. And that's sort of like, you know, during that time, the government was like, oh, play to earn, just be safe, right? They don't really, you know, they're like, okay, let it be, but we're not here to enable it as of now. But actually, interesting enough, just as of a few months ago as well, we're seeing more strides when it comes to government adoption for blockchain. Okay. Specifically, um, two scenarios. Around two weeks ago, our advisor, um, Isabella, she was at the Philippine Congress actually, and they're um, discussing the blockchain bill as well for the Philippines. It's called Republic Act 678 or 65. I'm going to copy on that. Okay. I forgot the number, but basically it's a regulatory bill in the Philippines okay. that aims to put a framework finally right on so crypto that's the initial already exactly yeah yes so it's still behind closed doors right now but proud to say as well that it's cool it's going to be part of the technical working group as well and that's helping. amazing yes thank yeah. you thank you uh we're going to be helping stir the conversations with the congress and congresswomen in the philippines okay. to you know create a proper bill mm -hmm. that is enough for regulation for crypto but of course at the same time won't stifle adoption and of course innovation in the crypto and blockchain space in the Philippines. Now, second scenario as well, um, actually just a few days ago before this trip, right, or where I'm right, right now in Vietnam, um, I was invited as well to the launch of the eGov chain of the Philippines. So this is the official blockchain of the government. Okay. So their plan basically is to build a public and private blockchain that will secure the documents, identities, and a different um, staple uh, things, right, that Filipinos use on a daily basis. IDs, medical records, so on and so forth, right? So I don't have this details on that yet though, because they're still very general about it. Um, I don't know the tech stack, I don't know the language being used. I don't know who's behind the project even, but the at fact least, that right? uh, yeah, at least you know the fact that they they intend to have a government blockchain officially, finally, is for me a good sign nonetheless as well. So yeah, these two things, right? Um, these were the major shifts in development just in the past few months actually, and I don't think has been picked up yet by the mass markets around the APAC region. But of course, these are things that you know we're trying to share as well. And thank you again. Uh, for giving me this opportunity. Well, um, anything that should be progress, especially when it comes to like legal, right? Uh, legislations. Of course. Yeah. So, uh, how, how about the mass adoption? Is it big in Philippines, crypto and blockchain? Definitely, yeah. yeah. I mean, when it comes to mass adoption in Philippines, we're actually number five when it comes to global cryptocurrency adoption as of a study based by chain analysis last year as well, right? So. Um, we also have very high numbers when it comes to MetaMask users and the ownership. We have grown in crypto volume over 362% during the 2021 uh, bull run as well, right? So pairing all of these adoption statistics to our social media usage, um, we average around 7 hours, 8 hours per day as well at the very minimum, right? Uh, for all Filipinos, by the way, on TikTok, Facebook, Twitter, and whatnot. And pairing that as well with the fact that our GDP of trillions of dollars, 10% of that is attributed to remittances. Now, remittances, as we all know, right, is a major use case for crypto and blockchain. So all of these things I just said in the past minute really creates this perfect mix and per perfect recipe, right, for a population in the Asian region to, you know, be one of the forerunners in this new space as well. So when it comes to user base, user acquisition, just having that presence overall, Filipinos are very active in crypto. Um, I held an event last week as well in the capital, 
and I saw so many new faces as well. I'm very happy to see you as well, right? Um, and we're seeing this community grow on a daily basis. And really, the only thing that's lacking, right, is I guess the more ecosystem support and collaboration with other peers from other countries, right? And I do hope to see that more as well in the coming quarters. Amazing. Maybe we'll talk about, you know, about go back to Biscayla, Biscayla a bit. Yeah, I just want to uh, know, like, what's the tricky parts when building, you know, all of these educational materials? Mm. Because, I mean, crypto and blockchain, it's not the same with, like, normal, yeah, right. educational materials. Right. Mm. So what's the tricky parts for you guys to, like, condense everything mm. into something that it's so easy for people, even, like, non-technological uh, people right. will understand? Of course. So I guess um, two things, right, I'd say for education specifically. Number one is uh, fighting misconceptions in the Philippines, right? Because again, we're a country that benefited a lot from remittances and from the play and gaming side of crypto and blockchain, right? Now these skyrocketed over the past few years and it came to the point that these uh, use cases grew so much without proper education or awareness, right? And that brought about, of course, lots of misconceptions from the older generations or those people who have less information about crypto and blockchain. So before Bitcoin came to play, there were really lots of stuff about Bitcoin, crypto. Oh, that's a scam. Oh, that's a Ponzi scheme. Oh, where's the value from? What's the backing, right? So many things happen, right? And there's this, I guess, um, you know, I guess side note, right? For the Filipino people, we love chismis. That's, that's the word for it, or gossip, right? Okay. Gossip, mm -hmm. or just, you know, putting stuff out there online, uh, misinformation and stuff. So these things can spread very quickly, right? Locally, unfortunately. So that grew a lot over the past years, right? And on a daily basis, since our mission is education, we fight those misconceptions on a daily basis. When we talk to congressmen, when we talk to mayors, when we talk to different older communities and staff, right? Again, they all have this inkling on the back of their heads that, okay, I heard of crypto before, but in a bad way. Mm -hmm. So how can you, you know, I guess, yeah, change my mind change. on crypto and blockchain? Mm -hmm. So that's definitely a major thing that we have been facing um, over the past quarters, right? Number two, of course, is education. Let's be honest, right? It's not the most profitable thing right off the bat, right? Um, yeah. As compared to building a D app, DeFi applications, a blockchain protocol, NFT collections, so on and so forth. So being in education space as well and being one of the only ones in the Philippines as well for crypto and blockchain, uh, there are definitely hurdles, right, when it comes to funding or keeping the lights on. Um, I myself, I manage a team of 25, 27 people right now um, from different provinces of the Philippines. And as you can imagine as well, that um, takes a lot of capital or resources, right? Uh, when it comes to forest, paying the bills, keeping the lights on, keeping everyone intact as well in the team. And again, um, we don't charge for our content, right? We don't charge That's a single penny. That's the amazing part. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, and then, I mean, but for me, I think if you're not charging any, I like not charge any fee, but then you're giving them the education and the, the education to actually invest in something, mm. That that's the part. Of that's course, <laughs> that's one way, yeah. yes, yes. But going back to my point, right? Yeah. Um, we don't charge a single cent to our content. So when it comes to the revenue model, right, or the revenue streams of its Escuela, mm -hmm. we're limited, right, in what we can do as well. Of course, uh, we've been doing our very best to you know, find these different uh, avenues for funding as well, funding or support from different ecosystems, which you know, have been created so far mm -hmm. um, over the past few years. But yeah, I guess those are the two main things. Again, misconceptions in the Philippines and of course, uh, funding to keep the lights on at education companies. Well, with, with the progress that we're seeing, I think you're, you guys are doing great. Oh, well, thank, <laughs> thankfully as well, yes. <laughs> well, to wrap up this interview, I think uh, one, just a fun question. Uh, how do you think about crypto and blockchain? What is your expectation for five to ten more years? Very good question. Yeah. I'd say, um, is it more in the Philippine context or global um, context? You can go both ways. Both ways. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'll probably focus on the Philippines okay. um, because it's close to my heart, right? Okay. Um, crypto and blockchain for the next five to ten years. Point number one is I do hope to see as well to for the Philippines to continue to be one of the leaders when it comes to adoption worldwide. I mean with a country of our size and a population of our size, it's pretty amazing to see that we're at the top of the list when it comes to adoption worldwide. We've beat, we're on par with the likes of Vietnam, India, China, right? 
and you know being on this map with everyone here else in the APAC region it just you know says a lot about our country as well. Uh, number two as well is I do hope to see actual use cases being implemented in the Philippines, which is really happening, right? But I want some more manifestation on this note. Um, like again, going back to my point, remittances is a very, very big use case here. Um, I do definitely think that the Philippine people can, and they are currently experiencing these benefits, right? If I wanted to send money from the Philippines to let's say, um, give me a country, Singapore or Germany, right? Mm -hmm. um, I would need to send my money through a you know, traditional bank or a broker. It would take me forever, forever. right? It took me <laughs> three days, man. Super long time. So many forms, so many fees, three banking needs to send my money. But as a Filipino, if I want to send money through crypto, it would only take one minute at most, right? Just an interconnection on my phone, bang, bang, it's sent to my um, grandmother or grandfather, right, in other countries. And this, this in itself is already a major value add for Philippines. Save so much time, so much energy, and so much money as well, right? Again, going back to my point, um, we're very big in exporting talent in the Philippines, right? We have so many OFWs in different countries around the world, and these families often send money back and forth on a monthly basis, right? So imagine how much value is lost in fees and transaction costs and whatnot. And all of this could be remedied, remedied sorry, by cryptocurrency and blockchain. Now, number three, I'd say is, I do hope as well to see it and, you know, for the government of the Philippines to double down on their promises when it comes to, of course, being open to crypto and blockchain. And attached to that as well is to not, I guess, um, put in regulations that are too harsh in the, in the in, on the industry, right? Because again, I do believe personally that regulation is important and plays a role when it comes to this uh, emerging technology, but I do not want it to dampen or hinder any adoption, especially in the Philippines, right? So uh, this is definitely a balance there, and I do hope the Philippine government um, does heed to that as well. But yeah, those are the three things I'd say um, for the Philippine market over the next five to ten years. It's not vague at all. It, it's, <laughs> it's clear. <laughs> Thank you. Thank it's you. really clear, clear vision. Uh, can I do two more? Go questions? ahead. Go I ahead. read that you are a polka dot lover. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, tell me about it. Uh, what, what are your thoughts on the ecosystem? Well, when it comes to polka dot, right, I do appreciate the fact that it is the biggest DAO um, in the ecosystem right now. Uh, putting focus on open governance. Mm -hmm. I love the fact that people are there to put their ideas in, the proposals in, and everyone also has a vo voice right, in the vote as long as they're holding DOT tokens, right? It's really, I guess, one of the true manifestations of decentralization right now in a crypto and blockchain space. Of course, number two is I'm very bullish as well after Gavin Wood um, announced the great paper, right, on Jam. Um, this, yes, yes, very excited for that as well, right? And these are one of the things we also want to cover very soon as well on Bitsquas and for the Philippine market. But it really just, you know, it's, it's an illustration to me as well that the Polkadot system is strong and alive as well um, over the past years and in the coming years as well, right? Um, again, with a great leadership and vision of Gavin Wood, I definitely do think that you know, Polkadot has ways and ways to go in the coming months and years in the system. To go a little bit more specific, because not a lot of people, not a, everyone would think that it, it's, it's like the sexiest ecosystem, <laughs> right? But then you have your point. So what are some of the factors, mm. like the core factors that will keep you with Polkadot? For me, it's not really about being the sexiest, right? Because um, like what I think mentioned a while ago, right? Uh, when it comes to blockchain and crypto, the name of the game is really longevity. I believe that in the same sports, right? The name is how it's long can stay in the game. Boxing, same thing, right? Same in crypto, right? It's not being about the flashiest, sexiest blockchain out there protocol, but it's about being the sturdiest and most, I guess, uh, long, long, what's the word for that? Longevity? Yeah, uh, longevity. You get the idea, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, strongest, for the uh, long term? For the long for term, the yes. Long -term. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's be being the strongest, right? And you know, the one that can withstand the most challenges throughout um, the space, right? And over the past few years and the coming years as well, I do believe that Polkadot has the right infrastructure to combat all of these things, right? Um, actually, just like what Max said earlier in the panel above there, um, that Polkadot as an infrastructure already has this ecosystem that can support all of these innovations right at the bat, right? If I wanted to build my own D app or um, different protocol, right, on top of Polkadot, all the resources, 
already right there, right? If I need the wallet, there's sub wallet, there's Nova, Talisman, etc. etc. If I wanted to do an app chain, there of course there's Tansy, right? So these are all things ready of readily available right in the Polkadot ecosystem. Again, combining that with a true decentralization of uh Polkadot's infrastructure. And for us, it's utmost security, which for me is very, very important as well um, for any blockchain or protocol in the system, right? Um, but of course, with all that being said, um, this is a system or ecosystem, right, rather, that I truly believe in, believe in, and I'd love to support as well in the coming months and years. So, can we expect anything uh, upcoming planned for Biscella and Polkadot, maybe? Of course. Yeah? Can <laughs> so, you spill the beans? <laughs> of course. So, actually, one thing there is, um, during my trip to Vietnam, um, I met my good friends uh, Chris and Ducky, right? So, shout out to you guys if you're listening right now. Um, and we will doing, we'll be doing a lot more content, right, with Polkadot Insider and Biscella again for the Filthy Market. Um, you know, we will learn a lot as well on how Insider does information spreading for Polkadot ecosystem and it's our job as well in Bitskola Sand to localize it in local languages and you know, just really connect with the local communities working hand in hand again for this uh, regional adoption. Of course on another, on another note as well um, we do have a lot of events lined up as well in Polkadot in the Philippines. Maybe another Polkadot Connect in Davao, in Cebu as well, which are, by the way, the provinces outside of Manila in the Philippines. And as well as more education on the upcoming JAM uh, Great Paper Red, which I'm very also looking forward to as well. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. So, um, Jiro, thank you so much for coming here today. Um, it's been eye-opening for me, mind open. <laughs> so, uh, I hope that I can have more chance to talk to you in the future. Of course, likewise. And thank you so much, Pia, and of course, the Insider Team for having me today. Thank you.